Go Rain Town! Welcome to the rookie class, right? This is NATO uh, New Agent Training and Orientation. It's meant for everybody. The great class is it's about how to show a home like a pro, right? Everyone knows how to show a home like a pro? Not. I'd say that you don't. I'd say most people don't. How many people have watched Million Dollar Listing? Don't lie to me. <laughs> don't lie to me, Laura. Okay, okay. You watch, you, you've watched Million Dollar Listing. This is what they do. Like they walk in, right? They're like, oh, look at the 20-foot ceilings. Oh, and look, oh, look at the cabinets. So they're so nice. Marble flooring, all this stuff. And the people behind them are going like, what's this? Right? Because it doesn't matter. I mean, people can see for themselves. They can see that sort of stuff. They don't want you to point out all the little things about the house, right? Right? Anyway, let's get started. Let's talk about this. Let's start from the very beginning. Start from the very beginning. All right, someone calls you. We're gonna assume that this is someone you've never met before. They say, hey, I wanna look at 123 Main Street. You're gonna hear that address a lot when you're hanging around me. 123 Main Street, I wanna see that. You're like, great. Let's meet on Tuesday at five o'clock. They say, perfect. Go. What do you need to do to get ready? Give me some ideas. Well, initially I would ask them what interested them about the home. Why? Because we need to know what's important as to why we're going. Mm-hmm. Very good. You don't know what their deal is. Is it a flipper? Is somebody who wants to buy it? Is somebody who wants to rent it? What is it? Who is this person? Why are they there? What is important about this house, right? Give me some ideas of something that could be important to a potential buyer. Uh, the bedrooms, the square footage, the bathroom, and location because of schools. Mm-hmm. Very good. All that stuff's super important. Anybody else? Lum, you look like you're ready to say something. No. What do we got? Um, if there's enough space for the kids to play around in the house, possibly if they have a big family or, you know, a kitchen if they like to cook, the nice appliances and stuff. Very, yeah, that's exactly right. You need to have some ideas of what they're looking for, exactly what they're looking for. Gives you some insight to their life. Am I right, Nam? Yeah, am I right? Yes, 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 I am right. Okay, very good. Very good. Okay, so now you're getting prepared to go meet them. It's Tuesday. It's 3 o'clock. What are some of the things that you should check before you go? What's some of the information you should have for them? Well, um, having the seller disclosure handy uh, would, would be nice for them. I like to pers personally call the listing agent prior to going just to find out level of interest, why the sellers are selling, because these are frequent questions that I get while I'm in the house. Why are they selling? Um, mm -hmm. That's important to some buyers. Yeah, very good. Uh, get some information about the house, like what's going on here. Is it going to be sold today? Are you going to go out there, going to fall in love, and it's going to be gone? Like, well, no one ever comes and sees this house, figuring out the level of interest, right? What is the seller's disclosure? Why does it mean something to the buyer before you even, uh, when you very first meet them? It's everything the seller is disclosing that they know about the house. Either they know, I don't know, not applicable, or no. Mm -hmm. So, and it's important to, if let's say there was a leak in the house or there was a renovation, um, if there's permits that were done, everything that they need to know. Very good, very good. So Nam, so Nam, um, tell me this. As if you're a buyer, you're going to a house, like you're meeting this agent that you don't even know. You don't even know this person, right? You're meeting them. Do you think having that information is gonna make you feel better or worse? Having that, the seller's disclosure form? Uh, better. Why is that? Because it makes you look more professional. Yeah, what's, the buy what's going through the buyer's mind when they very first see a home? What's going through the buyer's mind? They're gonna see a home with you for the very first time. What's going through their mind? Yeah. Um, Are they, how do they feel at that point in time? Let's, let's say that. How are they feeling? If it's the first time, they're probably a little, they're not really sure what they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, and they're usually curious about whether or not, if it's an older house, sometimes I've had them say, like, be concerned about, well, is it too old? <laughs> I, yeah. There's a lot of things that are going through their mind. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes they wonder about how old the appliances are. Yeah the roof. I mean, there's a lot of everything. It just depends yeah. on the level of the buyer's knowledge and hundred percent, hundred percent. Levin, you want to add something into there? Um, if I was going into a house and I, I had some questions about it, I would really just want to know, like, did this person do their due diligence in that sense? Like, you know, are you doing the best thing that you can do to put me in a position to feel comfortable to go into this house and see about it? So, yeah. Very good. So, yeah. yeah so, how many of you have seen a movie that has a real estate agent in it? Right? Mm -hmm. How do they perceive us? How do, how do they show us on TV? What do we act like? 
<laughs> yeah, Haley. <laughs> like the skis ball salesperson. Yeah. Skis ball salesperson, mm -hmm. right? So, so uh, we're the ones who are trying to push them into something. We exaggerate things about a house. We do things because we want to try to make them buy that house. We feel like used car salesmen. I'm sorry to, if I offend any used car salespeople out there. That's not my intent. But you guys know what I mean, right? So what we have to do is we have to shatter that stereotype. We have to shatter the stereotype of a pushy salesperson right off the bat because they're nervous. They remember walking into a car lot and having someone tell them, they're like, hey, if the price is right, if the payments are right, are you willing to buy this car today? Have you guys been told that before at a car lot? Mm -hmm. yeah. Will you buy this car today? They expect yeah. those words from you. You have to shatter that so they understand that, that that's not your goal. So we bring information, bring the Form 17, have some information about the house. What about having some information about the sales around that same neighborhood? Do you think that'd be a good idea? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Smith's residence right down here sold for you know, 525 about three months ago. I seem to have a few more updates than this one did. This one around the corner was a split level, so it sold for a little bit less because the price per square foot's a little bit less. But I think overall, you know, the home seems like it's priced pretty close to where it might go for, it might actually sell for. Does it make you sound like you know what you're talking about? Yes. But if you just open the door for them, like, hey, come on and take a look. I'm gonna go on my phone, you know? I got some calls to make you go help yourself. Does that sound like you know what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Is that a way to, to, to get confidence in people? Mm -hmm. No. Right? So let me ask you this. Um, you meet them for the very first time. Where do you stand? Where do you meet them? You meet them on the street. Only people with a microphone get an answer. But what was that? Nam? Outside. Outside where? Outside the house. Where? In the parking lot. In the parking lot if it's a condo. What if it's a house? In the driveway? Close. Yeah, I'd meet them on the sidewalk. Oh. i meet them on the sidewalk. Why do we meet them on the sidewalk instead of at the front door, even if it's raining? Why? Well, you can meet, I, I, I meet them outside. That way you can kind of also, I usually go over the house structure as well and uh, the roof and just mm -hmm. before we go in and kind of just give them an idea of what we're going to be looking for. Yeah. <laughs> so. Mom, come over here for a second. My beer drinking Alaskan Amber friend, come on this side of me, please. So he's my client. I meet him at a house. Say hi to the crowd. Hi, everybody. Hi. You're you're my new buyer, right? You're you're you're. We meet you at the house, right? House is over here. This is the sidewalk, right? It's the sidewalk. It's not the entrance to the house. It's the sidewalk. This is the stuff I might ask him. Hey, nice to meet you. You know, thanks for meeting me out here. Thanks for showing up on time. I always make sure I I show up on time, right? Otherwise, they might hate you for for being late. You can ask him. All right. So, what do you think of the neighborhood? Um, oh, it's all right. But do you know the neighborhood at all? No. Well, where'd you come from? Tacoma. Tacoma, all the way to where are we at? Renton. Renton. All the way to Renton. Can you hear? Can hear? You want this? Yes. Can you? Uh, you Let's give him the mic. <laughs> right. From Tacoma to Renton. Why? Why Renton? Why am I doing this outside? Why am I doing this outside instead of when I get inside the house? I have no idea. More of a warmer intro, so we just kind of, you're getting to know them. No, hold that. Oh, oh, I see that. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, go put that back in her face. <laughs> My bad. Not enough mics to go around. My bad. But what? Why? It's a warm intro. You're learning more about them before you get in the house, before you even step in the front door. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Hey, let me ask you this. When, uh, when it's Christmas, anybody have kids? When it's Christmas time, right? Once the, the presents are out for the kids to open, right? once the presents are out for kids to open, do they hear anything that you say? No. It's the same thing when you're showing a house, especially if the first time they're like antsy. You know, as soon as they get inside the house, they're, they want to go take a look at everything. So you need to get some of these questions answered before you give them that, right? That way you can know how to handle their needs. Because right now I'm trying to find out more about him. So how'd you come in the neighborhood? He's going to say, well, I came through here. I'm not exactly sure. I follow GPS. All right. So when you came through the neighborhood, does this look like a neighborhood that makes sense for you? Yes. It does. OK, that, that makes, that makes sense. So what do you know about construction? I don't know anything. You don't know about construction? OK, we're going to get along really well. I do know something about construction. No matter what, don't worry. We'll have an inspection before you buy a home, so that way you're going to feel more comfortable about it. Right? I start talking to him about this to make him, make him understand that I'm here only to be on his side. 
Right? That's what happens before we go into the house. I gain his trust immediately. I'm working and gaining his trust because he won't work with me if he doesn't trust me. People need to like you and then they need to trust you. People will work with you if they don't like you, but they do trust you. But they won't work with you if they like you, but they don't trust you. So building trust is extremely important at this moment, okay? So we start talking about that. Okay, well, cool. Don't worry, I, I, I know a little bit about it. This is a, you know, this looks like a three-tab roof. Looks like it's probably about 15 years old because it's a 15-year-old home. Roofs typically last 20 to 25 years. Siding looks like it's cedar, best, uh, best siding you can get. Start talking to them about some things. You may not be able to talk to them about construction, but have things you talk to them about. Understand your, your craft. Get to know homes. Get to know landscaping. Get to know neighborhoods. So when you talk to them, you talk to them in a, a very logical way. They're going to understand that you know what the heck you're talking about. Cool. All right. Well, then, ready? Let's take a look inside. And away we go. All right? Thank you. Cool. You're going to have a seat. That's what happens before you even go inside the door. If you don't do that, you're making a huge mistake. You become what we call a door opener. You're a door opener. Now, if you're a door opener, you're not going to get very many sales. You're not. Now, I just gained a lot of rapport with Nam. When we talk, he's going he's to immediately say, Rob made me feel comfortable. He didn't make me feel pushed at all. Right? That is super important. He's going to understand that right off the bat. But I didn't say anything about buying the home. I, I only talked about things that's going to make him feel like we're going to do everything we can to make sure everything's okay. Any questions about that? Everyone understand that? Mm -hmm. We open the door. And that's where I go, look. Look at, the, <laughs> look at all the stuff. Look at the hardwood floors. No. I go in and say, hey, let's take a look around. Right? Let's take a look around. Now, we're in Seattle, so I don't typically bring out the seller's disclosure or anything like that until we get inside the home. Otherwise, it's going to get rained on. Right? But then when we get done looking at the house, what I like to do is I like to make sure when we're walking around, I start checking out things for them. I ask them things like, so what would you do with this area? What's important to you about a kitchen? Is this big enough for you? Do you need a big pantry? Right? Do you need, a, you need an owner suite or just a regular bedroom? Okay. An office. How many people are going to live with you? Why? Because I'm really working on what exactly it is that he needs. He doesn't know most of the time. He or she, you don't know what you're talking about. We don't even know what you're talking about. No, a lot of times people don't know what they're going to buy. How many times do people come to you and say they want to buy a four bedroom, two and a half bath home and they end up buying a condo? Yeah. Right? They don't know. And so sometimes it's good to ask questions so that way they'll start to figure out for themselves what's going to be best for them. I had a client that came to me one time, she just referred to me, he came from Texas. Um, amazing gal, love her to death. She says, Rob, yeah, I'm moving to Bellevue, I'm going to go work for Expedia. I'm looking for like, uh, you know, a 2,500 square foot home, I want to be on an acre, I want it to be irrigated, I want all these things. I'm like, okay, cool, how many people are going to live there? She says, just me. I'm thinking, she wants to be around Bellevue for an acre. <laughs> Bam! So what's your price range? Well, about 450. Okay, this is some time ago. So back then you could not get a home in Bellevue for that, but you could get something. So I'm like, okay, well, right? We, we just, we could start talking about it. We, we started talking about what was she was really going to get. We had to start talking about what's more important, location or the house. She ended up buying a one-bedroom condo overlooking Maiden Bower Bay for 450 nice. Super happy. So anyway, once we started asking questions, we could start to figure out what's really important to them. She figured out location was, we got the coolest condo. She's still in there 15 years later. Loves it. She loves it. Okay? Any questions about that? You guys help me out with some questions here, slackers. You're slacking? There you go. See? The new guy. Let's say, for example, um, you want to meet them on the sidewalk, but they're not necessarily, they're just trying to get inside the house and rush it, like just trying to go inside. Yeah, okay, I understand, I understand, but you want to go inside. Let me just see the house before you ask me all these questions. Like, do you push for, like, just to ask those questions, you know, try to understand them, or are you just like, okay, you know what, I'm just going to let them lead me? Mm hmm. You'll have some people that just care about that, but that's the exception. It's not the rule. Okay. Most of the time, people, first of all, um, I have to make sure I beat them there. If I don't beat them there, they're already at the front door. And then I got to go, come over here to the sidewalk. And I look like an idiot. <laughs> but when I'm standing at the sidewalk and I'm going, hey, Nam, hey, is there you, Nam? Nice to meet you. Right? I meet him when exiting his car. What's going on, buddy? I say hi to him. Right? Boom, what's going on? Nice to meet you. And then I turn, I'm like, so how'd you get here? 
And so they don't, they're not going to say, yeah, but, you know, let's go. Let's go, because people aren't rude. And if they are rude, then they're probably something else is going on, right? And they talk to me right then and there. So I, can, I don't remember when that's ever happened, unless I'm late. I'm late, you know, I'm in trouble. Then I have a hard time getting them through this process, right? Right? So you go inside the home. What are some great things to do when you're inside the home? What's some great things to show people? Give me an idea. Um, well, as you're looking through the home, you know, look up at the ceiling and make sure that there's no watermarks, damage like that, any cracks in the walls, because that could indicate something going on with the foundation. So being able to point those things out and be able to speak to it and reassuring them that, you know, should they love the home, we'll get an inspector in there just to make sure that it's going to be okay for them. But doing that shows that you care about them and not about selling the house. I, I think. Very good. That's very good. Is that when you can whip out that seller's disclosure form? Yeah. yeah. Whip that out like, look at this. And you're looking at it like, what are you looking at? Oh, no, I've got some special stuff. I'm looking at the seller's disclosure form. You want to see it? I do. It says here that they had a water leak in 2009 in the kitchen. I'm just checking to see if I can see any remnants of it. I'm like, dude, you do that for me? Well, of course I do that for you. It says that there's some settling in the sidewalk out back. So I'm out there in the back going, what is all this? Right? I'm helping them make a great decision, right? Because the word is, uh, what I tell them is, I don't care the colors. You guys have probably heard me say this before. I don't care the colors, I don't care the flooring, I don't care about any of that stuff. That's your job. That's your job as a buyer. To fall in love with it is your deal. I'm not gonna make you fall in love with something that you're not supposed to fall in love with. You like purple cabinets and you like green floor? Who am I to say no? That's not my job. My job is to tell you the consequences of falling in love, right? So if it has some water leaks, it has some issues, we need to talk about that, right? If you say you want, you want to have a home and you want to make it into a daycare, but they don't allow daycares in the neighborhood, then maybe we should talk about that, right? That's my job, to help you with those decisions. I don't know how big your furniture is. I don't know how big you need your owner suite to be. I have no idea. That's your job, man. Just measure it out. You want me to help you measure it out? I'll get down there. I'll get on the floor and act like I'm on a bed. We'll figure it out. I'm about the same size, a little bigger than a queen size bed right here. Right? Right? I can lay down on the ground and I can do that. I can bring a tape measure. I can do that to help you figure it out. But all those other things, those intangible things, that's my job. That's my job. If you tell me you want, your, uh, you want to have Thanksgiving there at your house, okay, let's go through that. Let's make sure is the table for 12 going to fit in here someplace. That's what I can do to help make sure you're making the right decision. Question. Well, I was going to add on that too, because if you've had conversations about that for Thanksgiving or they love to cook, stand back in the kitchen and say, could you see yourself cooking in here? Your, what's yeah. your favorite meal to cook? They tell you and they say, okay, is there enough space in here for you to cook? And it's yeah. like painting the picture of them living there. That's great. You know, I had this client one time and I, I'll never forget it. She was telling me that, hey, I want at least a two butt kitchen. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> Two butt kitchen? She's like, yeah. Like when I'm cooking, you know, I'm, I'm doing my thing. And right now we only have a one butt kitchen. Only one of us will fit in here. Mm -hmm. My husband can't fit. But he likes to get in there and help me out with chopping stuff up. And we just can't fit. I'm like, it's, it's like we're all just trying to get around each other. I need to have room for two butts. And it's always kind of stayed in my mind. We got two butt, a three butt kitchen. Right? How many people can you actually fit in here to do some work? And Thanksgiving, I like to have help. I'm, I'm the Thanksgiving cook in my family. I need some help. I want to have enough room so they, someone else can be chopping and dicing and boiling or doing else, whatever else they need to do, right? Very good. Questions about that? Nam, what do you think of the house? It looks great. Perfect. I like that. So one of the things I like to do is I like to, as you were saying, I want to try to find problems with the house. Why, the reason I want to try to find problems with the house is because I want them to understand right off the bat that I'm looking out for them. If I only point out the positive things, it looks like I'm trying to sell them, right? When I'm saying things like, look at the floors and look at the counters, and these cabinets are amazing. I mean, wow, isn't that, is that beautiful, right? They're thinking, salesman, when I say something like this, I'll go, I'll go to the title, I'll go. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm looking, I'm looking for hollow spots. And then seeing that the, the tile is a task, the tile's not exactly attached, it's probably had water problems before. I like to go in the shower and shake that stuff out. I like to go to the toilet and do the old wiggle. <laughs> Don't ever use your hands because that's disgusting. I like to do the old wiggle to see if the, if the toilet's moving because the toilet isn't secured. It could be leaking 
into the ceiling, causing the water and the water problem, right? So I want to check things like that. And I'm like, what the heck are you doing? Right, that's right. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, the two butt kitchen, and then the yeah. Like I'm just, I'm just checking, and I'm not like, hey, come watch me. I'm just out there doing it. Yeah. I'm just out there doing it. I'm like, whatever happened to Rob? And I'm in there, <laughs> make, making noise and looking at things. I'm like, yeah, you like it? Okay. Well, this is some of the things we need to look at for. So when I see over here, I see this and I see that, and I think that you're, you're, you, you can't put your dining room here. But what do you think about this? And they, they immediately start thinking, Rob's looking out for me. Rob's looking out for me. He's not looking out for his check. Commission breath, my friends, is a real thing. Commission breath is when you start thinking about your commission instead of your clients. And when you do that, when you do that, you look like an idiot. You, you should feel like an idiot, but your clients think that, you are, that, that you're a bad person, right? So people have a hard time in the beginning. Most of the time I'm thinking, and this is a phrase I was told when I first got in business. They said, Rob, do business like you got a million dollars in the bank. Mm -hmm. Do business no matter how much you, you got. It, you have a red number on your bank account. You still, when you go there, you act like you got a million dollars. If you don't, they're going to smell it. They're going to smell that blood, and they're going to say, you're not my agent. You're not my agent because it sure seems like it's about you and not about me. Yeah. I, I try to focus on that a lot to let them know that, if you don't love the house, I don't love the house, but I'm not the one living in it, you are. And making them know that if this isn't the house, that's okay. So they understand that we're not, I'm not just out there, like you said, for my paycheck. It has to be, since it's a really big decision for them, a financial decision, they need to love it. And if we buy something in six months from now, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Very good. I think that's super important. Have you ever shown a home and your buyer liked it and you said, I won't sell you this home? Right? I won't say this home. I've been there before. Because just you know the buyer profile, someone who doesn't know anything about construction. I showed, I showed this home in Kent one time, in Kent, Washington. It, it's one of our primary markets. I right, would go in there, and uh, I had a tech guy, and he was marrying this um, paralegal student. No idea about construction. Zero. Right? But it's more square footage for the money. We walk in there, and I actually made a video of this and put it on Facebook. Ants, moisture ants, just flying all over the place. Just everywhere, all over the windows and everything. And he's like, oh my God, look at all this square footage. Look at all this. I mean, we could really make this into something big. And I'm looking around, you could see the rot. I could push my fingers through the bottom of the walls, right? I'm like, dude, you don't understand. I'm not selling you this house. If you want to buy this house, you could do it. I'm not going to tell you you can't. You're just not going to do it through me. Because at night, I got to be able to sleep. Right? You have something else for me. Yeah, you're talking a lot yeah. today. I appreciate you. I just got out of contract because I encouraged my client not to move forward. They kept doing the same thing, and we ended up having my general contractor come in, almost $30,000 worth of, of things that need to be done just to live in it. And they were willing to do it if the seller would do it, and I just got down. The seller wouldn't give them the credit, and I just said, I don't feel comfortable selling you this house. I said, there's going to be others. If it means we wait a little bit, you don't get in before Thanksgiving, I'd rather have you in something that is going to be, I don't, I can sleep at night and feel comfortable knowing that you purchased something that's not going to have plumbing issues and things that are going to come up down the road because knowing the buyer, they don't have the funds to be able to afford it. So yeah. what yeah. does that do? It builds trust with them that, okay, she's not just in it for the sale. It's really about me. Mm -hmm. I think that's good. It shows character. You guys, we need to show people that we have character and that we care. Right, you know, people keep saying that computers are going to take over our jobs, and I'm going to tell you that their computers will never take over a job. Someone asked me last night, is AI going to take over our job? And I'm telling you right now that it will not ever take over your job because they don't have what we have, and that's genuine compassion, genuine care, the ability to look at someone's situation and say, you know what, my friend, I care about you enough to say this is not the house for you. Or sometimes this, I know you're saying no to this house, but my dear, this is, this is the best house you're going to see for the money. Mm -hmm. You can say no all you want to, but every time you, you, you think about a home in the future, you're going to look at this one. You're going to say, I should have bought this one. And I need to be the, the one strong enough to tell you that. Buy it or not, I don't, it doesn't matter to me, but I'm telling you, every single time you see another house, you're going to say, but it's not like 123 Main Street. Right? We have to be strong enough to tell them that. And you have, they have to have enough faith in you and trust you enough that you can say that, and it's going to be okay. All right, questions about that?
Yes. I got a question. So let's say you're showing somebody like a house for the first time or they're a first time home buyer and you're doing the thing like, you know, you're knocking on the table, you know, this is a one blood kitchen, you need two blood kitchen, all that stuff. But you keep showing them houses and they keep getting thrown off by what you're saying. Like, how do you balance it to the point where it's like, okay, you know, this might not be exactly what you're looking for, but this can't work for you. Like, how do you have mm -hmm. that conversation? Yeah. I talk to them about that. That's a great question. I talk to them all the time about, I'm going to find a problem with every single home that you want to buy. That's my job. I mean, that's what you hire me for. I'm going to find a problem with everything. That's, that's what I'm supposed to do. But I'm also going to tell you this. I'm going to say, you know what? Is this the best home that we've seen? I'm going to ask you a very important question. At some point in time, I'm going to ask you, is this your favorite home? And they're going to ask you, do you have a second favorite? And you know what? When they tell me they don't really have a second favorite, they only have a first favorite, that's the home for them. I can help you solve the problems. You have a problem with something that's mushy, you have some problems with plumbing, I can help you get that fixed. I can help you get that fixed as long as you can afford it. But I'm going to talk to you about those things that are negative about the home, right? But I'm going to help you make a great decision. And you're going to see a lot of your clients are going to ask for permission. When they trust you, they're going to ask for permission to buy a home. They're going to like, but Laura, yeah, but you said this and this and this. You're like, yeah, and I get it. I did say this. I did say this, but if we look at the, the full scope of every house that we've seen, this is the one that fits your needs the most. I'm not telling you no when I point out things. I'm just telling you this is the things that we're going to have to deal with. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that does. Okay. Yeah. People trust us. You know, we are the ones that, that we're the holders of information, and they, they want to know that they can count on us. So be one of those people they can count on. Be one of those people they can count on, and one of those, not one of those people who just tries to force them into something because we want a commission. Okay? Don't fake that. Make that real. All right? Anything else, guys? I appreciate you all. Thanks for attending the, this class, how, learning how to show a home. That's another thing that's going to make you or break you in real estate. This is going to make people want to work with you when you do what we ask. Okay? Let's make it happen. Appreciate you all, man. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, and what do we do? Pow, right? Yeah. Pow. Pow. All right, it's rain town. We're out. Thanks, guys.